Hello and welcome to the Brooklyn Rails 1037th New Social Environment. I'm Chloe Stagaman, Director of Programs here at the Rail, and I have the extreme pleasure and privilege of being your MC today for a conversation featuring Florian Pumhosel and Yuki Higashino. And now I'll introduce today's guest and host. Florian Pumhosel lives and works in Vienna and Munich. Pumhosel's works, reliefs, paintings, drawings, films, and installations are constituted by themes and references encoded within a visual language that appears formal. Through the selection, reduction, rearrangement, and reproduction of his motifs and source materials, procedures of transcription, the artist arrives at a vocabulary that is at once abstract and semiotically motivated. We're currently interested in formal processes undergone in relationship to terrain. Pumhosel's latest work departs from a longstanding involvement with human land shaping above ground to derive forms emergent in subterranean zones. And our host today, Yuki Higashino, is an artist and writer based in Vienna. He has exhibited at Carriage Trade, David's Werner, Mammoth, Last Tango, Le BBB Centre d'Art, the Living Room Art Museum, Gallery Kunstbüro, Contemporary Art Factory, among others, and has an upcoming solo show at Kunstloge Rattingen in May 2024. He has screened his films in Vienna and Bilbao. His writing has been published in journals such as Art Forum, Textokunst, and the Brooklyn Rail. He is a co-editor of Agency Journal. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Yuki. Thank you very much, and yeah, very excited to do this conversation. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick introduction to uh, basically how uh, how I know Florian's work and what kind of uh, dialogue we've been having over the years, and then I will ask Florian. So the first time I saw Florian's work was at Documented World in 2007, and it was an installation with diverse grass paintings and some works he selected from Japanese modernism. And it was, I was really, I remember being really impressed by that presentation. Um, I was at the time an art student, was a dogmatic art student, and I believe that intellectual and kind of research heavy approach to art making and formalism, formalism was somehow mutually exclusive. And in Florian's work, I saw how formal sophistication and conceptual legal can be synthesized. And so, so, you know, so this kind of tension between form and concept, you know, I, I was too proven long. And, and I, I learned through his work that strong artists pass through both intellectual depths and aesthetic excellence at the same time, and with broad historical consciousness to somehow back them up. And, and then a few years later, I was an exchange student at an art school in Copenhagen, where Florian happened to be a guest professor at that semester. And, and that's, how I, that's how I met him for the first time. And then I moved to Vienna a few years later, and, and then a kind of dialogue about each other's work continued ever since. And I'm really excited to do this conversation because his current show at Miguel Review in New York, I kind of witnessed this evolution, and the, the, the evolution of those works from its very early stage when it was just a series of small sketches. And and until they are kind of making them make formal decision on the final product. And so Florian is going to give us a kind of virtual tour of the exhibition. And uh, we are going to basically discuss the works, the idea behind them, this kind of both conceptual and sort of formal decision he had to make in the process. And yeah, Florian. Do you know? Uh, yes, hello. Uh, uh, good evening or afternoon, uh, depending. Um, Florian uh, um, uh Thank you, Yuki. It's it's a, it's really a pleasure um, because you have been, as as you put, a, a frequent visitor, or we are visiting each other frequently in the studio. So 
Um, I'm very happy to do this virtual walkthrough uh, with you. I have prepared a few images and like um, I would uh, be very happy. To, uh, can you see that? Is that okay? Looks good to me. Yeah. Um, so this exhibition is called Lithosphere. Uh, Lithosphere is practically uh, everything uh, solid uh, underneath our feet. However, this might be in scale or material or uh, strata or how it's being imagined and displayed. And this is an exhibition that we just opened uh, about three weeks ago at Miguel Abreu Gallery uh, in New York. And that will be on until uh, May 11 this year. Um, I would start with the entry. Um, so uh, this is the first piece. Um, it's called uh, Decomposition. I would like to start with a detail. Uh, all these works are uh, reliefs. Uh, it's, they're all painted reliefs. Um, the whole body of work uh, started in uh, late 2022 and were kind of developed and, and fabricated uh, throughout uh, 23. Um, this first piece, I show this detail, uh, it shows um, the strata of cardboard, of painted cardboard that, uh, or the layers of painted cardboard uh, that these pieces consist of. And this is basically book binding technique uh, on, a, on a panel. Um, um, and uh, this would be the full piece. So these pieces are approximately uh, 90 centimeters uh, for you to see, you would see them uh, in in space, and I would say that th this piece is in the entrance because it um, it brings a somewhat new feature to my work. I have made a lot of like linear composition, uh, and this piece is a study um, in which. Um, the otherwise very vectorial lines that I was using, or this kind of like plastic lines that I was using in the reliefs is uh, somewhat corroded or appears somewhat corroded. Um, this piece is painted with a with a sink, with a sink white, and it leads us to a room uh, with mostly white pieces, you know, the layout of this gallery, um, it's a very open floor plan. So it's kind of a flux that is more creating zones rather than uh, perspectives. Um, and uh, I've come to these zones uh, later when, when we uh, come to color. It's a kind of space that unfolds as we walk through somehow, no? Yes, it unfolds and it, it invites, I think, to, to circulate. Uh, it doesn't have monumental visions, but it corresponds nicely with, you know, it's kind of like a flaneur space that also opens up through the city. Um, uh, it's the fourth show in the gallery, so um, uh, it, it's, it's almost like a new theme each time or a new kind of like um, uh, a new kind of space or imaginary or that, that it, it refers to. Um, so this is the, I'm showing only a few so that it's still worth for you to see this uh, exhibition as a lot of this, I think, or I hope um, is unfolding when you experience the, the materiality of these pieces. Uh, this is a detail uh, of a slightly smaller relief. Uh, it's, uh, they all have this kind of like subcategory that we came up with. It's, uh, they, they all have this kind of like uh, category lithosphere and then they would have like little hints in the title. And this would be the pause, which would be a pause in drawing rather than, in, rather than time. So this is the 
this is the full piece here. Um, this is a slightly different white coverage. Um, it's made with a, with a, like all the white pieces are made in gouache. I, I, uh, I like a lot, um, I like gouache a lot. It like, it opens the, uh, it opens the pigment. <clears throat> it shows very beautifully uh, <clears throat> a matte color. Um, and um, this would be uh, a marble pigment that is resolved in a, in a gouache binder and it gives this kind of like uh, very decent, uh, slightly uh, slightly chamois kind of tone. If, I'm, if I may interject, these are works, I have to point out that these are works that you just have to see in the space. Um, you will see, I mean, same with, with the kind of coloring and pigmentation of the work we're going to look at later, but especially the white pieces, the subtlety, it's just unphotographable and it reacts to the light condition of the room and and it just it just the kind of work that you need to physically experience because you also don't get the sense of depth uh, properly in the photograph and and yeah so anyone in New York you have to see those works. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 so I mean I, I think the I mean the exhibition is becoming more and more a kind of uh, like concert concerto form or kind of like live music uh, format also it's kind of like we we uh, we all invest and like uh, thank you also the, the team of Miguel Abreu Gallery I think we all invest a lot for these kind of situations to to come together or to be like so that, that we are able to to experience work together. Uh, it's like the same for me as, as, as for the viewer. Um, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in this kind of micro tonalities of like, what is really the property of such a work? I mean, of course it has a, you know, it gives you a certain surface yeah, and it also might qualify as information or as visual information, but, um, I think for for the experience of a work, uh, th there might be other other categories as well. Like um, I like works that that have something vocal, that have something tonal. Yeah? So um, in in this case, and I I might come um, maybe more in general to you know what what this category of the relief means to me I'm, I'm working with with reliefs uh, for for uh, more or less a decade the relief um you know when when categorized in by art historians or so it's kind of like okay what is it uh, uh is it a is it's this thing between painting and sculpture um and that's kind of like not my approach i'm i'm not interested in this kind of categories. I'm more interested in what this is offering as a kind of irritation of the surface, as, a, as what it offers as this kind of like shell or plasticity. Yeah? Uh, I think in our conversations, you were describing this so uh, precise that any kind of like visual or pictorial situation has an X, um, a Y, and a Z axis. And so let's say like the, the, the X would be the horizontal, the Y would be the vertical, and then there's this Z axis, which is materiality, depth, which would be in a painting, would be facture, would be the, the layering of materials. That, and, and, and that kind of like tonality is, is um, far aside from its from its illusional qualities, which is also something to play with, um, but maybe more in the Renaissance and before, uh, um, it, it it gives this texture. Uh, it, it it gives this texture and tonality, and I'm, I might move on with the details. So this is uh, another piece in this room, another. Uh, with this kind of subtitle of a section. So um, we see that, you know, in, in this whole group, 
there there is no seriality yeah like each of them has a bit of a like even extravagant um uh like it's its own kind of like loose visual origin or so so we might look at this little sphere from above we might look at at it in a section such as this piece we might look at it like purely visually like as a, as a kind of like uh, composition but this is all of it's kind of like this is what this uh, place which is not manifest uh, seem seem to allow me in a way and this this is a white piece this is a zinc white piece that is slightly uh, uh, less chamois than the others and then I might come to what is somewhat of the last piece in the show but I would like to demonstrate maybe how these pieces were made so I go backwards so this is a detail um, of a, a piece th that we have given this assumption debris so kind of like a fossil or a scattered shape like something uh, that might be uh, yeah, kind of like a fossil composition of some sort. Uh, so, so what you see here is the is the finished piece. It has a it has a marble uh, paint, or this is um, the piece with primer. Um, it's like one step before, so you, you would already see that there's like along the contour there's something darker huh? and this is the piece before priming before painting and here you see that um, we used something in the studio um, you know I had I had very great partners with this uh, uh, Elizabeth Kielström an artist very good artist from Vienna was helping me along with the uh, development of, of, of the work and you, you were a frequent visitor. So this is something when we say we, there's like many people who look at this together with me. And uh, when looking at this contour, um, I cut from cardboard yeah? and I cut from cardboard and I was unhappy with, uh, you know, when, when you cut this, the, the contour, like this intentional contour was still very present, uh, like almost like an architectural model. And then um, there was this idea to maybe corrode this uh, or kind of like uh, uh, oxidize this contour so that it becomes less manifest. And, and then of course, like in the, in the art historical uh, subconscious that it would be available from surrealism or so there it's all these moments of of a work that is that is burning uh, like the fumages of Pai for instance or or later the fumages by Yves Klein or so so this seemed like a kind of like nice nice sprawl in a way so here you see the burnt contours and so you basically you basically singed you singed the the outline with yes. the uh, with, with 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 fire basically with fire yeah yeah so 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 it's so, so there, there's a kind of element of controlled accident somehow yes I mean I mean I'm a little bit ashamed because like you know all this kind of like uh, <laughs> uh, you know to work with fire or so it's it's such a uh, um, it's such a kind of uh, a blunt uh, 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 terrain, but it was a necessity. Let's put it like it's very, this. it's very good. It's very Gustav Metzger somehow. Uh, yeah, I, I would prefer Metzger over Puri or something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, so, and that would be the preliminary drawing. Um, I think we would come to to. The drawings later. Um, um, you prepared one-to-one -one drawing for each piece, no? If I remember right. 
Uh, yes, yeah. It's kind of like you know the the relief is a is is then a relatively static category and and um, so the drawing had to be very precise for this like it 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 was a lot of search especially for kind of like how to put the compositions how to how to deal with the with the space and especially like how large such a piece would be so. The, the space of the pieces, I would say it is about, and, and then it was like uh, a lot of like projecting and drawing and redrawing to really find the right, uh, the right framing for this in a way in the, in the, in the relief. So let's move on. Um, this would be um, a section, another kind of like, you know, there's this intersection in, in the space. This is where the long wall uh, starts, and and this is where uh, color comes in, or uh, the, the the first of the three colors comes, uh, the second of the three colors comes in, and this is a, um, um, I mean there were discussions: is this is this gray or is this blue? But it's kind of like a um, in in German. Uh, there's this dove blue uh, kind of it's it's a very uh, decent little color it, it shows the uh, it shows the relief well I think like it has a different uh, uh, contrast and important to me is that I we make all these colors and it's kind of color for me is is not a very active category. It's more like something that needs to be experimented, that needs to be found. Yeah? It's um, uh, I'm I'm less interested in this kind of like you know signaling or you know uh, all, all these connotations of color. I'm I'm more interested in like how it sounds. What is the materiality? So this um, the color pieces here. Um, our, our oil, it's kind of matte oil. Uh, it's something we experimented with. It's a technique that you use oil paint and then um, you would extract it with turpentine. So it's a very long wait, it takes two weeks and then and then you can apply it, but it's, uh, and it shows the color very well. I'm, I'm not a big fan, like when it comes to this monochrome surfaces, I'm not a big fan of oil paint. I don't like the glossiness so much. But this is a very nice way to kind of like move it maybe closer to you know how a gouache or uh, a kind of like more open surface um, texture would look like. So this piece um, is a, is also it's it's a, it's a bit of like in terms of compos composition it's it's one of those decomposition situations I I, I would say. So, um, didn't we want to talk about monochromy? You exactly. Can... Yeah, no, I was. I was just trying. I was just trying. I was waiting for a um, <laughs> window, window to enter. But yeah, so the monochrome has been sort of very uh, prominent um, strategy of yours uh, in let's say last ten years of your work, and and. Um, and it's a very deliberate decision. Like monochrome, idea of monochrome comes with very heavy art historical baggage. So I, yeah, I'd like to ask you how you arrived um, at this decision of of, um, of introducing kind of monochromatic field in your practice, and 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 also how you thought of like maintain it, and kind of what's how you how you thought of like let it have new new parties right somehow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you, you put it very uh, right that like, I mean, monochromy is this kind of like key thing in the whole history of the avant-garde from Muruchenko to, you know, Reinhardt, Mark, what, what, what not. And it's, it has this like totally legitimate uh, heroic kind of connotation that but that's not what I'm interested in I'm not interested in this kind of like canon or to make another you know uh, I mean of course I I decided I mean most of my 
like nerd interests or so would would lie in you know early 20th century avant-garde so so, so these are pieces but this is this is work that in size and composition and sound like uh, would very much resonate to me um i wouldn't think that, that i mean monochromy for me is more a way um okay to say a piece has one color and this color is a kind of like physical or almost like a fossil, something that needs to be found or that needs to be almost sculpted. And monochromy gives me, um, you know, it's like playing a violin that has only one string. And to just go deeper into this kind of like micro tonality of something or to, to, to explore the aspects that like, you know, what happens if you cannot play a terz, you know, it's like, or a, a, a polychromy. Yeah? Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, so it's, for me, it's more, it's almost like a musical uh, possibility uh, of, of a piece that is kind of like situated maybe um, between facture and, and a certain kind of vocal quality of a work. So that's, that's more something that I'm interested in. Like I'm, um, it's a very, it, I like the modesty of the, the operation rather than like, you know, the, the, the heroic uh, 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 odeur that comes with it. Sure. Yeah. Also, I also think it's important uh, for people to know that you don't go into selecting Kara for its symbolism like you don't like the, the color doesn't come as pretty term and concept but you arrive at color through sometimes months of tests and hundreds of hundreds of um mixes that you you produce and um so 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 the color you look for color somehow instead of like you start with an idea about yeah right. I mean, but I mean, I would I would say I mean this this is a bit sketchy, uh, uh, but I would say it's kind of a, a psychological substance for mm -hmm. me, uh, mm -hmm. and and it's also what I like about coloration. And, I mean, it, it it's it's a very subjective terrain, and it's a very nice way um, for a work to build relationships. Um, mm -hmm. It's like you have your own subjectivity and you have your experience of color, of a tonality, a certain intent, a memory maybe of something what that feels just right or, or a pigment that, you know, attracts you, uh, the imagination of a color and then you share it with somebody else and it becomes something completely different. Yeah. And I think that is a that is a nice way that like, you know, color is embedded in this terrain of taste very much in this kind of terrain of, of, of you know, sometimes very personal or subjective um, experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah. you, you might like something because it's it's kind of like uh, uh, it goes back to your childhood. You might dislike something for the same reasons. <laughs> so, um, or or you have certain expectations. You have high and low expectations on color. So I think I mean, for for me, coloration is is both. It's kind of like materiality. It's factor of work, but it's also a kind of like very subtle way of relationship building. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's this kind of psychological substance that that I would I would refer to. Yeah. Do you find uh, do you find kind of limitation you um, apply to your process? Like it's usually it's one color, one material, and composition somehow. And do you find that um, you think that allows you to have deeper engagement with, with a body of work that you're developing? Like kind of allow you to make a deeper dive somehow? Hmm. Um, I mean, I, I think this brings you like 
to bring us to kind of like experience of art making. Yeah, it's kind of. I mean, I start every process um, or every every group of work. So every work leaves certain loose ends, and then there's always this desire to you know make or fabricate something very simple this time, and it always ends in this like complete intensity yeah, mm -hmm. making even, even if it shows very simple property and i think it's kind of important it's like i think in every piece like it 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 is something that that wants to be discovered in a way or it's kind of like a, it, i mean uh I, I i i maybe i mean this might sound a bit strange but i think Every piece, like even if it shows a very like minimal definition, it's a bit like a wild animal. You know, you you need to relate to this. You need to get to its presence, you know? and mm -hmm. and and you just have to give the beast what it needs. You know, in terms of materiality, in terms of you know uh, all all the factors that that are uh, that are relevant. You know, like uh, I think the I mean, for instance, the space. The, even if it's very simple, like the space that the work requires for a composition is, this is totally crucial. Like form, format is not a banal thing. It's like, how big is something? How, how, and then, you know, all the other properties can, can unfold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, should we, uh, should we uh, continue with the- uh... Yeah, let's move on. Let's move um, on. So, uh, I think I'm going backwards. So this is the full piece. So this um, this is uh, I think this has a, a very weird title. It's Phreatic Cave. Don't ask me what. Um, and this is uh, this is an, another section. So this is more like a piece that is that is built from strata, and it, it I think it shows a kind of like more associative uh, uh, composition. Um, which is something that in, in this group of work has been a lot of um, consideration. Like, you know, if, if you enter this terrain of kind of like, uh, I don't know, the, the imagination of something that might be below or inside of something that you wouldn't know, there's all these kind of impulses and, and, and the pictures uh, depictions reappearing that are associative. You would, you would, you would come to, let's say, anthropomorphic constellations, parities, symmetry. Uh, you you would come to, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, animal-like figures or monstrosities or something like that. And and I think in in this process, like uh, you know, you can't really act reductive. Yeah, taking away all these properties, but kind of like find this moment where something like this appears plausible or so, or possible, and then leave it. Yeah. Yeah. So this this um, this is a detail. This this is another piece. This is yeah. the space. So the, this is like the second color section yeah, of of these of these blue pieces, yeah. and. Just, just as, as an aside, I, I also kind of want to point out that it's more common for relief to protrude towards you because relief, most, I think most reliefs are made as an additive process. And I think it's more, it's, it's less common that relief kind of recedes somehow. Like this is, a, this is because, because your process is almost kind of sub, subtracted rather than additive. And uh, and the, uh, the 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 depths go back instead of protruding towards towards the um, towards the viewer, and I think that's uh, I think that's kind of interesting detail. Yes, I, I think what what you're describing was for for this group like was 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 really the most important moment that kind of like to think of these pieces as you know going backwards from from the surface or you know, rather than, uh, uh, you know, presenting this kind of relief. I mean, a relief in the end as this, as a visual, um, how, how reliefs uh, work is that thing that, uh, or is, is 
I mean, they only become uh, manifest through light. Uh, uh, I mean, you can say this about every artwork, but uh, uh, in 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 a in a relief, this is more uh, manifest, maybe, or it's more obvious, yeah, mm -hmm. um, uh, because you can identify that like the, the piece is just constituted by shadows, uh, shadow play. Um, uh, but, but it looks different in different, or it does different things in, in different light sources. So, like for instance, in this piece, like he, the the upper contour is is it, it's simply the light that is coming down from 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 the gallery ceiling, and it would reflect light on the lower parts of the relief, and it would uh, it would create a shadow, and and this is everything that's there. So. But um, yeah, so it's also a relief has this like beautiful um, uh, effect that you know you, you would look at it and you wouldn't after some time you you wouldn't be able to tell what is positive, what is negative. Also, yeah, I mean it's more the optics. Of it. Yeah, yeah, they are acti they are activated by light in a more conspicuous way than than uh, other. Other formats, but yeah, let's let's move to the sad body, sad group. Of yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, so here's the here's the third group, and I mean there had to be something dark, you know. If you if you go to some like subterranean, there had to be a dark color. I I would make this quick, and 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 uh, I used to work with like these earth reds intensively. I love red, and I love all these kind of. Uh, iron oxide pigments, but that was not an option because it was kind of like so obvious. Yeah? And then there was this violet, which was a real challenge yeah? to get a violet. I mean, this, I don't know what you see on your screens. This is some, it's some image of violet, but this, this to make it. Yeah. No, sorry, um, it, 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 it were reproduced. Okay, but you know, to, to make this color like flow and kind of like interact with light, this was an intense process. Um, so this this is another one of of, of the section pieces, and uh, this is a composition that uh, it's a pause type composition that comes very early in the process. Um, so uh, yeah, and this 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 is a, this is a detail. Huh? But this violet, I mean, it's based on on a kind of cobalt, and then there's all these kind of like aspects of violet. So this is the color I I worked very intensely on. Um, yeah. So these these are uh, the some of the of the composition in 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 this in this dark violet section in in the exhibit. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you this kind of question more. It, it, it's no, it's more about your practice in general. Um, and so you have this shift from focus on pictures, like the uh, the works um, that I got to know initially of yours were, well, essentially kind of composition of lines. That is, you know, mm -hmm. your reverse grass paintings and the works on um, works on, on kind of plaster uh, with, with sort of stamp process. And but around 2015-2016 you have this very decisive shift towards volumetric works. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah maybe you could tell maybe you could tell us about what how that shift uh, came about and how how you've been exploring it. Hmm. Um, uh, I, I've been thinking about that. I mean, I think it's a it's an observation that I was almost shocked with, but it's totally correct. Like you know, the, also the first pieces I showed with the gallery, they were they were stamped stamped lines on plaster, and then like this plaster became this possibility of you know like uh, of very like fast and. Uh, and uh, 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 the, the plaster turned into this possibility to be, to be transformed uh, into like more of a sculpted 
situation in 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 in, in the painting. I mean, I would I would I mean maybe this is a bit strange, but um, this turn or this shift to plasticity, um, I I I would answer this with with Victor Hugo maybe, yeah, like. Um, in 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 uh, the Notre Dame uh, descriptions, um, he he would describe um, a world before the printed, you know, before the book, and that in 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 this world before the book, architecture would be the narrative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, architecture would be that, um, or in my case, plasticity. Would be the main narrator. Yeah? Mm -hmm. it, would, it would be the story, the storyteller uh, of of you know the medieval world, and I like this observation very much. Yeah? Or I mean, it's a fantasy. It's probably not really historically profound, <laughs> but I like this idea that you know this the plasticity or the surface or the relief itself is this kind of is, is this kind of narrator yeah? mm -hmm. that sculpting or that like plasticity um, is this is um, is this possibility uh, you know that something plastic itself would be the equivalent of a word a sound uh, mm -hmm. something tonal vocal that that could be experienced. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's my uh, you know uh, this, this is the kind of experience that I desire. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't expect Victor Hugo to come into a <laughs> coming to conversation, but yeah. it almost makes sense. So you 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 so 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 if I understand it, so it's right. So it, it almost kind of introduction of tactility to picture, like the, the tactility is a sort of like almost um, interface between composition and the kind of physical space that art, artwork exists. Mm -hmm. But I think, I mean, I, 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 um, I maybe I, I just, uh, you know, I, I got more sensitive over time uh, uh, th through this kind of like possibilities of, of plasticity yeah? mm -hmm. through, through through working with this material uh, uh, of you know reproductive or, or yeah reproduction techniques and printing techniques and all these possibilities uh, of paint but maybe le let's let's go to this I think where so this is kind of like where where you, you exit uh, this show. Uh, and then I have prepared a few more images. Ah, yeah. Uh, I hope this is not jumping because we wanted to speak about drawing at some point. Oh, yeah. So these are these are not in the show. This is this is preparatory material. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 No. So yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about this kind of centrality of drawing in your practice. And, I, mean, yeah. I mean, these these situations are from are from you know th th this is more from within the making. Uh, so this is drawings that uh, you know you might fi find similar in the in the relief in the reliefs themselves. Um, I would say like drawing for me is this kind of like motor of the work. Yeah, and I I. I draw constantly. I, I rarely show these drawings, um, but for me, they're this kind of like. Um, and I would say, when finding a terrain yeah, or trying to describe a certain terrain or a certain space, like drawing is this constant activity for me. It's kind of like it's either this proof, and it's a very reproductive process. 
I, I draw things again and again and again. I overdraw things. I copy, I transfer uh, to, and then at some point, I would say a, a piece stabilizes. So this is this is the same for uh, for earlier works which have like maybe more geometric compositions. Um, um, it's it's the same uh, as as for this work which have this kind of like anti narrative or so. Yeah? Um, so this. And this this would be the very the earliest attempts I would say I, I wanted to show this so this is like transfers and fragments and it's kind of like more this can this attempt to you know okay I have this dark zone and you know what would be what would be still flying around uh, but uh, so it's kind of like you see that the the, the drawing in the right corner. It's, it's something that became manifest in relief, relief and the others not. It's kind of like you, 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 you um, yeah. But I mean, maybe this, maybe this brings us also a bit, little bit to something that um, has, I think, it's kind of like this character of the line, you know, this this negotiation of the line. And I think in this in this exhibition, this has been a very a uh, uh, crucial moment for me. It's kind of like how how would you see this? We we talked about like the line as this, this kind of you know corroding situation. Yeah, it's like you have put this so beautifully in our discussion that like you know in in geology, uh, what uh, line is accidental? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's it's not a category of of composition or there's no, there's no intentionality yeah it's it's uh it's not about like you know finding the dividing line or something it's it's more like you know describing this crumbling between different properties of, of things yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, i think yeah. this was, yeah so this was an image that we looked at for instance yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm also thinking about this is something we um, talked quite a lot during the during the COVID time. This kind of importance of daily practice for for, our, for an artist, like something as an artist, something you do every day, and mm -hmm. and something that sort of you do it habitually. Just something that's kind of um, sustain you as an artist. So, uh, and the drawing, I believe drawing is that, that daily practice for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we both wish this wouldn't have so much power over us, mm -hmm. but, I, I, but I, I, I sense like, you know, in operations like painting, drawing, it's this, this streak uh, does a lot. Uh, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's very much that like, you know, time, time produces a lot. Uh, I think what, what, what the audience gets is is time spent mm -hmm, a, lot mm -hmm. it, a lot of it is like you know we you offer you offer a certain process but you also offer your time in yeah. Yeah, constituted yeah. in a piece yeah no i mean you you know you you invest time right it might not be invested on in physical production of the final piece but there is sort of there's a history behind it, and there's a kind of repetition behind it, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, while, while music is this delirium that has a beginning and an end, yeah. uh, we, 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 we make a different package out of this. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh. yeah, no, music, 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 music is an event somehow. Well, we, yeah, I mean, we, we present picture, I mean, not, not in a kind of two-dimensional sense, but in a broader sense, but there's, um, the, what, what we produce is somehow, always, always somehow a picture, one way or another, even if, even if it's three-dimensional. Mm. I mean, um, sh shall we move on with, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the, this is another one that we looked at, you know, this, this would be a, a, a petrified oyster. Yeah. 
uh, this, these images that uh, are, th I bought a few recently and it's, it's this really beautiful uh, kind of like fossil object uh, that, you know, it's, uh, yeah. When talking about this kind of like, you know, this idea of the stratum, the line, or like how time is preserved in the work. So this, this was a strong and very pleasant image for, for this group of, like while doing this group of work. Yeah, and, and maybe, um, it, I mean, if we're talking about like, you know, going to the lithosphere or going to this kind of like terrain below the ground, we, we might look also who has been there before, or we might have this little look. And, uh, you know, though I think, uh, you know, my artistic methodology couldn't be more different. There's this, there's this hilarious pieces by Dubuffet, uh, Jean Dubuffet from the, from the 50s. So this would be a piece, it's called Le Chien Jean Peur from, 1953 it's in, it's in the Makva and it's like and th there's quite a few of them where he's kind of like sketching this subconscious terrain or so and and this is a um this is a you know you have this upper line or this dissolving horizon and beneath there's this psychological objects yeah there's this there's like people turmoil you know, whatever, whatever it is. And it's kind of like, it's also a place uh, where there's no perspective and where the relationship between, you know, all these kind of objects and ciphers and and gestures is uh, is not very organized. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know? mean, yeah, this idea, I mean, it's, it's interesting to think that when you're buried underground, there's no perspective. Yeah, or in a dream, I mean, let's not, so claustrophobic, yeah. Like you know, in 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 a dream, there there is no uh, pro like fixed pro proportional pro proportional you know relationship between objects, and also like maybe maybe not in the methodologies. Yeah, and then and, and another one is of course like you know Schilderen and these beautiful uh, illustrations by Edouard Rio. So this is this is the uh, 1873, but that's what I mean. It's like you know, you have these giant mushrooms, and you know, you have all this, uh, you know, this idea that you know, when 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 you go beyond the surface or so, and when you enter this terrain, you might find a world that is kind of like um, similar to the one that you already know, but it loses coherence in a way. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it. I I think it's safe to say that anyone looking at your exhibition, um, Dubuffet and Jouvel, are probably the last thing that comes to mind. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, no, no. I mean, no, I, but I, I think, but then I think that's really interesting. I mean, it's it kind of really revealing, like how um, how artwork can emerge from very unexpected places and this kind of like process can take you can take you to very you know different place so yeah i mean i think it's kind of you know abstraction is this i mean to, to work with when you work with such a uh, or when you decide to work with such a limited uh vocabulary and i really like that i am and and with uh it's kind of like um I think demonstration is something that somebody should be warned of. Yeah, it's kind of like it's it's demonstration is this thing like it a work proves itself or it kind of demonstrates itself. You put something on there or something, and it it becomes a bit of a one way street. I think it's more interesting when you when you you know you have traffic coming towards you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like strange things. Yeah, it's like you know like this illustration or so it's like to have and then like to have things coming towards you and then like you, you would make a move you, you have to you know uh, make way or so mm -hmm. and and so 
yeah so it's kind of like for for abstract vocabulary or so uh i i think i mean for me the beauty of this is is not so much like this what lies in this possibility to demonstrate style or so but but more like you know this little uh you know this little entry point uh for for imagination for imaginary communication i think this is still a very beautiful possibility uh that that you know the young guards have left us uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i was thinking of how like abstraction can be a strategy to approach um how should I say? Like you know, to, to focus on geology that, that you uh, you've been dealing with with this this body of work. It's it geology kind of operates in this unfathomable scale and unfathomable time. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's I mean we can understand it as an idea, but it's not something that the millions of years and the planetary scale um, scale physicality. These are uh, impossible for it is unrepresentable somehow but abstraction allows allows you to to try in a way uh, yes i mean at at least you know um i mean maybe maybe coming back to to schulbern also uh, i mean maybe something abstract could deliver uh, both uh, a, a kind of very fast lane to something imaginary. Uh, you have a few notes, you have a few sounds, and then like it opens up a space. But it it has this reverse side of that it is objectifying. You look at something; it's present. It's an object. It's a defined object. It's a it's it's materialized. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so and these two sides, I think this is something that that I'm I'm, uh, I'm still very interested in. Or yeah. I mean, like you know, by looking at this map, this this would be a cave, but and it's a section, or it's barely a section. It's really having a hard time, you know. Uh, it's scriptural. It's kind of like. It's you can. It's a beautiful picture. It's a beautiful composition, but it's also a monstrosity. It's kind of like it. Um, it's and you know it's these kind of like micro moments. Um, uh, it's it's, it's uh, or uh, this 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 space between you know the way of of reading such a such. So, such a composition. This this is something I'm I'm quite yeah. interested in. Yeah, and also this, this is some kind of, some kind of consistent thing in your practice where you take um, you take an attempt to contain um, contain things like maps, a cartography, music no like notation. These are things that sort of contain. Um, something that is difficult to control into more kind of manageable form. But then you take these attempts to contain things and then expand into artwork. And, and you know, so, so there, there is this, um, there is this kind of like almost desire to be vast, the process of containment into expansion. Mm, I mean, this, this is what I mean, like, you know, when, 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 in you know making a drawing or trying to get something more manifest it's kind of like this this little um, um uh, how can i put it it's that it's, so, so with very little or with with a, with a very simple with very little definition uh when something appears possible mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. it's like when 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 um when you exit from from this this space of intent or so you have enough yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean like, this is you know, it's the um like say like musical notes on paper and 
that not played on piano. It's not the same thing. There's kind of mm. space, there's like a space between them, or more like a map, like a street map, and the actual city. There's like there's there's um there's there's again this space between them, and somehow like I feel like your work emerged from that space. That 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 somewhere this this yeah. I mean, we wanted to end this with a kind of, you know, uh, uh, with a kind of different uh, understanding of the lithosphere. Um, this is a picture that somehow I, I sympathized with, you know, during the program. It's, it's by uh, Aura White Hitchcock. It, um, it's uh, from the 1830s. She, she was a the painter and and the botanic and she made this like wonderful natural illustrations and you know this is this this would be the, the i think for this presentation maybe the um the right moment to stop yeah, yeah. or we we'll yeah. stop so this would be a little, so the line here itself would be the little sphere the sectional view of the crust of the earth this is colored. Yeah. It has it. It has everything. It's like, it's it has like everything. the representation of the whole world, whole world, just as a circle. Uh, very, yeah, very, very appealing, very appealing for Japanese person, I have to say. <laughs> but let's not go there. Um, yeah. So yeah, so, yeah. I think this this is definitely a beautiful image to um to conclude our conversation and. Oh. Yeah, I, I believe um, we want to take some questions from the audience. No? Yeah, yeah. I, I have a few questions from the audience for you. Um, and first, I just want to say thank you so, so much for this incredibly generous dialogue, which has been such a pleasure to listen to. Um, thank you both greatly. Uh, I have a couple of questions from the audience, both of which I'm going to ask on, um, on their behalves. The first is from GE. GE is uh, wondering, are you working to remystify complex legacies of art um, that's currently being made? Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, again, to remystify. Complex legacies of the art that is currently being made. Uh... No, I think remystifying is 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 uh, is not what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there 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 were. I think in previous debates on on early modernism, um, that, 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 uh, it was demonstrated nicely. You know how uh, uh, this comes from. Or this has a prehistory in in mystification in seances that you know it's all this kind of nineteenth century, uh, and I think I would I would rather leave it there. Yeah. Great, thank you for that answer, Florian. Um, thank you for if, that. If, if I if I if I want if my message, uh, yeah. one thing. I think um, I think it's important to acknowledge the complexity of art making, which I think Florian does. Um, but if you acknowledge the complexity and sort of um, deal with it properly, I don't think it needs the mystification. I think the complexity is enough. Uh, anyway, so. <laughs> thank yeah. you both so much for those answers. And thank you for that question, GE. The last question today is going to be from Janice. Janice has asked, you make many iterations in your drawing. Are you drawing a landscape from observation or are the drawings imaginative or conceptual? Um, all three, to the very simple answer. Um, I, I, I think I'd, I would massage this, um, Hello, are you still there? Yeah. I oh, am. Yeah. Sorry, I, I can't see. I uh, I would I would stress again this this um, 
uh, metaphor of you know the two-way lane and it's kind of um, I I'm not interested in such foils in a way uh, uh, like landscape imaginary conceptual or so um, I for me abstraction it's an active category it's a methodology and it's a methodology that kind of um, has possibilities to refer to all these categories. It has a prehistory in landscape, yeah? 19th century very much, yeah? like to, to dissolve from representation. Uh, it, I, the next category is the conceptual. Yeah? Uh, a, a abstraction is leading towards, uh, towards you know, this possibility to uh, uh, emancipate from the composition and kind of like become clearer about uh, all, all, all these mechanisms of, you know, what creates, what, uh, what, what all, all these forces of what creates information, what creates visuality. I think I, it's, um, all, all these categories, they, they would refer to genre um, and, and I think I, I'm, I'm uh, it's, it's more like, you know, what, what, what do these sources produce? How do they resonate? What can I do with it is, is more important than, you know, like how they, they would be categorized. Great answer. Thank you so, so much, Florian, for that answer. And thank you for that question, Janice. Thank you, both of you, for your questions. And I just want to say thank you one more time to Florian and Yuki for today's dialogue, which has been such a pleasure to listen to. Um, thank you as well to the Terra Foundation for American Art, who sponsor our NSC program and make daily conversations like this one possible. They also support our archive, which is available on our YouTube channel and uh, where you'll be able to watch this conversation later today. The Rail has been free and independent for 23 years. A donation directly supports our writers and our operations. You can support our work through the link in the chat. And if you're free tomorrow at 1 p.m., join us for a conversation with Canada Gallery featuring Sarah Brahman, Phil Grauer, Wallace Whitney, Joe DiNardo, Stuart Lorimer, Carrie Cholnoki, Michael Michalczyk, Zyler Jane, and Lily Way about the history and work of Canada. And as is real tradition, you all can now turn on your microphones and say hello and goodbye as you leave. Thank you so, so much for being here today, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Such a beautiful exhibition. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Florian. Yeah, thank you, Chloe. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you, so, much. Thank you so much. Lovely, thank lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Bye, Bye everybody. Day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See the show, everybody. See the show. <laughs>